Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from 3GameMan.com and today, well, I'm looking at something that gets me almost as excited as gaming video cards do and it's a camera. This is the Panasonic FZ or FZ digital camera. On paper, it is just incredible. Weatherproof, comes with an amazing 25 to 600 millimeter lens and you can do an aperture as low as 2.8 through the whole range. That opens up all kinds of possibilities. Plus, you can shoot 4K video with it. As a matter of fact, according to the reviews, it is just stellar. And a lot of, you know, semi-pro photographers will use this as their B camera. Well, let's see. First, the box, which has plenty of pictures as well as features and specifications about the product on it. Included inside is a CD that has applications and the owner's manual on it. You have a quick start guide, a basic owner's manual, as well as warranty information and information on how you can register it. On the right here, you have a battery, a charger, lens hood, lens cap, a strap, you have a USB cable, And the camera. So let's have a look around this camera. At the front, you've got the Leica 25 to 600 millimeter lens. Remember, this has an f stop of 2.8 throughout the entire range. On this side, there's a switch so you can quickly zoom in and zoom out. Manual focus is also possible with this little dial. Below it is a button so you can change between focusing and macro. Here's the speaker a 3.5 millimeter mic jack, a loop here for attaching the strap, and of course there's another one on the other side, a flash release lever, and an EVF diopter corrector. On this side is the grip, and I have to say it's excellent. When you purchase a camera, if the grip is not right, it really throws everything else off. And oh, I forgot to mention this. At the front left is the self-timer indicator AF assist lamp. In this compartment, there's a 2.5 millimeter jack for a wired remote, a mini HDMI port, as well as an AV out digital socket. At the top is the flash, hot shoe, stereo microphone, a mode dial, which by the way is pretty darn hard to turn, that's good, as well as another dial here which you can use to increase or decrease, like for example ISO or aperture, the on off switch. Now there are four function buttons on this camera, two are at the top and you can sign those to pretty much anything that you want, a record button for video, the shutter button, this is a Wi-Fi status LED and you can use this to zoom in and zoom out. At the back is an excellent eye cop, here's the viewfinder and the eye sensor. Included as well is an AFAE lock button and a switch so you can quickly and easily change between autofocus and manual focus. Plus a play button, display button, cursor button which has you know things like the menu, white balance and ISO on it. Here's the third function button. Remember you have two at the top and here's the fourth. And of course, let's not forget this wonderful touchscreen display. On the bottom, you'll find the tripod now, but note where it's located. Normally you'll find it in line with the center of the lens. This will pose problems with the tripod mount because it will cover the battery and SD compartment. Now, if you're not using a tripod much, this is not a big concern, but if you are, you will need to take the tripod mount off every single time. You either want to swap the battery or swap the SD card. Of course, you could get a plate, but that's extra cost. To access the battery and the SD card, flip this lever forwards and the door will swing right down. Also over here is a place to install the optional power adapter. Now I really quickly want to touch on most of the options within this camera and there's a lot. So, you know, I don't want to make this too long. So let's get started here. First of all, within camera, you've got photo style. You've got a number of different options here. Filter settings, again, all kinds, aspect ratio can be changed, picture size, picture quality, metering mode, burst rate, 4K photo, auto bracket, self timer, 
highlight shadow, eye dynamic, high resolution, HDR, multi exposure, time lapse, stop motion animation, shutter type, flash. Remember, you can pause this if you want to, you know, see more information about it. I know I'm flying through this quickly because I don't want it to be too long and boring. Red eye removal, ISO, limit sets, ISO increments, diffraction compensation, I zoom, digital zoom, conversion, color space, stabilizer, face recognition, and portrait setup. Okay, so let's go to the video side of things and let me go back to the top here. Again, photo style, similar. So these are pretty much, you know, the same options with some differences here, different record modes. Record quality, got the 4K options and the True HD options and lower settings as well. It's good to shoot in 4K. I mean, even if you're not going to render in 4K, the quality will be there, right? Uh, picture mode, continuous AF, meter mode. Again, these are pretty much the same as before. Let me just fly at the mic level as well here. That's good. You can reduce the wind if you want to. The zoom like options. Let's keep going. Let's go back to the very top. Custom set memory. Silent mode. AFAE lock. Hold. Shutter. Half press release. Quick AF. I'm just going to fly through these. Um, eye sensor AF. Pinpoint AF time, pinpoint AF display, assist lamp, direct focus area, focus priority. This is um, auto focus, manual focus. Just peaking, histogram, guidelines, center marker, highlight zebra pattern and I mean it just goes on right look at this so tons and tons and tons of options I just wanted to go through these because some of the videos that are done on this already they don't actually detail and go through these individually I'm not covering these in details obviously because we'll just take forever but at least you'll know that they are there. Like I said, if you need to stop and pause on something, go ahead and do so. And I could be using the touch screen right now, but I'm not because my fingers will be in the way. Okay, so let's go down here to settings. You can set go back to the top. You can set the you know, clock, world time, you got the travel date, Wi-Fi setup, which I'm going to go back to, but you got Wi-Fi options with this. You can control the phone, you can control, sorry, the camera with the phone, which is awesome. You can enable beeping sounds, uh, live view mode, uh, set that up, so 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, monitor display, I thought it went to shut down. USB mode, TV connection. You can, of course, connect this right to your TV, right? Using the HDMI connect cable. And Imperial Rometric. Background color you can change. Menu information you have on or off. Language. 
version, that's the firmware version, exposure, compensation reset, self timer, you can do a reset here, reset Wi-Fi settings, and do a format. Okay, within playback, you can do a slideshow, all picture only, playback mode, oh, let's go down here. Okay. Location logging, raw processing, clear retouch, edit the title, text stamp, video divide, time lapse. Oh, let me go back. Time lapse, stop motion video, resize, cropping, rotate, rotate, favorite. Print set, project, picture sort, and delete confirmation. This touchscreen is so handy whether you're navigating the menu or taking a picture for things like, for example, focus, or you can even just grab an effect really quickly, set it, and then bam. Having a camera with built-in Wi-Fi opens up all kinds of possibilities for not just transferring videos and files, but also taking complete control of the camera. You literally go into the menu, turn on the Wi-Fi, then use your device to connect to the camera, install the app or open the app, and voila! you have complete control here over it. You can focus on the subject, you can zoom in and zoom out. Go ahead, take video. Stills, change things like the white balance and ISO and all kinds of other options. Now this is a little bit of an audio, video and steady test for the camera. I'm actually holding it while I'm filming at 4K. And you can get some idea of the video quality as well as the audio quality. And overall, steady-wise, it's not too bad. Okay, so in this test, I'm still using the camera's microphones. I'm holding the camera, but everything else is manual. I set the ISO to 400, the shutter is at 60, and the aperture is at 3.5. Now this will give you some idea of the 25 to 600 millimeter lens. This is zoomed all the way in. And now, slowly backing out. It really, truly gives you a fantastic idea what a 25 to 600 millimeter lens can actually do. Now the 4K video performance on this camera is really something, but it also takes excellent pictures. So is this camera for you and is it worth the money? Well, currently it's around $800 and to be frank, at that price, eh. However, if you can get it on special, yes. This is one of the very best all around point and shoot cameras that's on the market because it has so many features and does everything extremely well. 4K video is just brilliant. However, I did find some ghosting and I think mainly that's due to the record format. As well, tripod mounts could be an issue. It depends on the tripod and the mount system itself. Of course, you know, you can get a plate as well to resolve that issue. If you're not using a tripod, that's not a problem at all. This is a camera that in an instant, you can be recording video and pictures and being able to get those shots that you probably could not get, you know, if you had a big digital SLR camera with all kinds of lenses because time you get that lens on your camera, well, you've lost the opportunity. So it is super 
super versatile. I have to say, I am extremely impressed with the FZ300. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. Well, that's it, but I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you think this and other videos that I produce are great, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Also, your comments are very welcome. And if you have any questions, let me know.